So my favorite anti-Christian apologetics ministry, Vision Unsealed, is at it again. This time, he's piecing together the World Council of Churches and the Muslims, all trailing back to the Pope. Let's go! The Dark Secret of the World Council of Churches. As you can see, they are big fans of the Novus Ordo. This season of creation is a time for us to show that we care for God's creation and that we pray for God's creation together. Well, if I recall Genesis correctly, we're told to steward the land, not preach the gospel to the land. This means that we have to call together for equal justice. We have to call for justice for those who are already suffering. And they're used to push big government policies. But what he's saying is not incorrect here. God calls the people of Israel over and over and over again to care for the poor. He doesn't want sacrifice. He wants justice. He wants mercy. He wants the poor to be cared for. These themes are repetitive throughout the Old Testament. And Jesus doesn't do away with that. He reinforces that. From, for example, the climate changes and other pollution we see today. This is the time to act. This is the time to follow up the commitments the states made in the Paris Agreement to take care of this planet. And here I admit we run into a little bit of a problem because those agreements were never and are never about the environment. They're about power and control over your lives. Our lives. But that's not to say that we've done a good job at stewardship. Since the Industrial Revolution, we have taken horrendous care of the Earth, which is in direct violation of God's very first command to Adam and Eve, to mankind. Climate change, world peace, social justice, redistribution of wealth, ecumenism. These are words that describe the World Council of Churches and not evangelism, salvation through Jesus alone, repentance, gospel of Jesus Christ, love and forgiveness. Bears beats. Battlestar Galactica. When you hear World Council of Churches, you might think it is an organization that promotes biblical or Christian teachings. On the surface, it appears such, but there is more to it than meets the eye. If you believe that the World Council of Churches is a Christian organization that promotes Christian teachings, you are in for a surprise. Well, you have certainly got me invested. So let's get on with it because we will unveil the World Council of Churches' dark secrets in this video. I really love the implication that dark robes and hoods are evil. And the blessing of Allah be upon you, thanking you for your kind invitation to attend this historic and unprecedented meeting. The Al-Azhar Institute delegation has come to Geneva, bringing with it the focus on the important issue of peace and presenting this to the WCC. This meeting with our Christian brothers and sisters is the third one. Last year, we met with the Church of England. A second meeting took place this year with Pope Francis at the Vatican. After these two meetings, the Al-Azhar called for the convening of an international conference on peace in Abu Dhabi next year. And we have to find the real roots of terrorism outside the context of the Holy Quran and the precepts of Islam. The parties that are promoting these false accusations need to find the real causes of terrorism that are linked, as mentioned before, in biased policies and double standards, as well as the greed of a minority defending its international and regional interests through the arms race and flourishing arms markets. Peace and the blessings of Allah be upon all of you. So it sounds like this is a context of an ecumenical meeting in which Muslims and Christians are discussing ways to bring about peace. This is not to suggest that they have the same religion or worship the same God or that Jesus is not necessary for salvation. This is literally a peace talk. Does our dear Protestant here find an issue with that? Yes, he does. You just heard a message delivered by the Grand Imam at the Ecumenical Institute of the World Council of Churches. As anyone would expect, 
this Muslim cleric concentrated his 23-minute video on how to address poverty, disease, and suffering caused by Western imperialism and power-mongering superpowers. A Muslim from the Middle East? Being opposed to Western policies? <gasps> Shocking! Yeah, of course this guy has his side of the story to tell. Whether it's accurate or not, that shouldn't surprise us. This is one of many dark secrets of WCC that masquerades itself as an organization that promotes Christian unity. Okay, we are minutes into this thing, and this guy is yet to show how they are fake Christians at all. Also, what is with this clown thing? Like, is this supposed to be, like, scary and tie into the church somehow? If you should die before you wake... <laughs> Instead of presenting the gospel of Jesus Christ to those in darkness and in dire need of salvation, the World Council of Churches seeks to unite different world religions. You know, shockingly, preaching the gospel and making peace with your enemies are not mutually exclusive. In fact, one demands the other. Why is the World Council of Churches dangerous and a threat to Christianity? Yeah, after five minutes, you still haven't come to an answer to that. WCC-affiliated churches represent roughly 500 million Christians worldwide. If your church is a member of the WCC, your pastors have most certainly sacrificed biblical truth on the altar of ecumenism, which means that the gospel they preach to you is more than likely a watered-down gospel, which is not at all the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, according to the Apostle Paul, the gospel is... For I handed down to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. That is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I encourage you to read that chapter and read that book. So now it's on him to show us how they are preaching a watered-down gospel, because according to Paul, that is the gospel. So they have every right to call themselves Christians or at least as much right as any other Protestant group. So I encourage you to, in the words of how to be Christian, to drop the Protestant and just become Christian. Is it possible that Catholicism clandestinely controls the World Council of Churches through Jesuits to weaken Protestantism? How did you know? And human reason will lead you back to God because human reason functions on a cause and effect structure and cause and effect eventually leads you back to the primary cause. Wow, look at John MacArthur almost understanding Aquinas, which is pretty much the opposite of what his boy Cornelius Van Til would have espoused. Here's a news report from the Vatican, Vatican City from the Los Angeles Times. Tempering a controversial Vatican declaration on salvation, the Pope said this week that all who live a just life will be saved, even if they do not believe in Jesus Christ in the Roman Catholic Church. The pontiff addressing 30,000 pilgrims in St. Peter's Square asserted the Second Vatican Council's liberal interpretation of the Bible's teaching on salvation. Quote the Pope, the gospel teaches us that those who live in accordance with the Beatitudes, the poor in spirit, the pure of heart, those who bear lovingly the sufferings of life will enter God's kingdom, end quote. So that the idea is this, false religion may be a barrier to salvation, but people apart from the Bible and the gospel can be saved if they can work their way around the barrier. What happens when you paraphrase a paraphrase? Well, you get a lot further away from the original quote. And that gives you plenty of room to just kind of reinterpret whatever is being said however you want it to say. Now what the church does teach, and this is in our catechism, is that those who actively seek after God and through no fault of their own have never heard the gospel and have never rejected the gospel, God may in his mercy save them. This doesn't negate anything that Jesus did. It is still by Jesus' sacrifice that we go to the Father, but we need to recognize that God is far more merciful than we are. Those who know the right thing to do and do the wrong thing, they are beaten severely, according to Jesus. Those who do not know what the right thing to do is, and so they do the wrong thing, they are punished mildly. Now, it would be one thing for him to simply disagree with what the church teaches based on the Bible, 
But it is an entirely different thing to intentionally misrepresent what the church teaches, which is what he is doing here. The biblical teaching that salvation only comes in response to faith in Christ is rejected as unreasonable and cruel. Okay, sure. Let's just go ahead and accept the fact that John MacArthur would reject the church's interpretation of this and that he takes away the authority of Jesus by, you know, MacArthur determining who gets to go to heaven instead of Jesus making that determination. Um, he has to show why that idea that he has is biblical. Now, the closest thing that I can come up with that he could possibly use would be Romans chapter 10, verse 14. But Romans chapter 10, verse 18 gives us more context of what he's talking about. And that's specifically to the Jewish people who heard the words of the prophets. It doesn't apply to all nations. So what's he going to use here? He's not going to find it in his Bible. People are saved if they live good lives and are sincere in their beliefs, whatever they are. Okay, just so we can clarify what the church teaches, because he is absolutely misrepresenting it, it is paragraph number 847, and it says, those who through no fault of their own do not know the gospel of Christ or his church, but who nevertheless seek God with a sincere heart and moved by grace try in their actions to do his will as they know it through the dictates of their own conscience, those two may achieve eternal salvation. So they have to not know the gospel through no fault of their own. They are still moved by God's gift of grace. It's not like there's no grace involved here. And it is a matter of they may achieve salvation. It's not that they will achieve salvation. Please pay close attention to this because it will give you an idea of who controls the World Council of Church and who they truly represent. Now, Gary H. Carr, in his work on route to global occupation... Wow. Check out that chart. You know you are getting some top-notch academic research when you see a chart like that in the video. So I decided, oh, sh**, I gotta dig a little deeper. Puts it this way. He says there were the ancient mystery religions, which come from Babylon, and uh, they were pantheistic, of course. It most certainly does not. Which means God is in nature, God is in everything, which in, in effect makes us God then too. We're only a few seconds of this guy talking, and he's just making it up as he goes. They had no concept of pantheism. They had a polytheistic pantheon of gods but not a pantheistic religion. This was inculcated in Kabbalism, was taken over in the Christian era in what is called Gnosticism. No, Kabbalah is an esoteric school of thought from the Middle Ages. It does not predate Christian Gnosticism, which was around within the first few years of Christianity. And the Knights Templars were the inner secret core that had the ancient knowledge of the mystic. You know, call me crazy, but that, that sounds like something that a French king would just make up in order to, you know, discredit people who he owes money to. Oh, wait. This was carried further through Rosicrucianism. Freemasonry and the Illuminati, which, according to Gary Carr, controls Marxism, American European secret societies and political societies, international banking, and the World Council of Churches. All right, I think that's enough of that crazy for one day. Consider this. The World Council of Churches 70th anniversary was attended by a Jesuit, Pope Francis. Hey, that sounds like a good thing. And this preacher from the United Methodist Church referred to Pope Francis as Holy Father. I wouldn't worry about that too much if you're a Protestant. I mean, according to the Apostle Paul, she's not a preacher anyway. A Protestant calling a mere human being Holy Father. What exactly is the objection here? Representatives from different denominations gave their ecumenical address, including Pope Francis. Instead of the Catholic Church's sin and wrong doctrines causing the Reformation, the Pope blames the split between Protestantism and Catholicism on selfishness. Yeah, you know, I would disagree with the word selfish, if that's the word that he used. I would say pride. You know, Martin Luther's pride, John Calvin's pride, John Knox's pride. You know, the rebellion against God and the church that he founded. 
That's the cause of the Reformation. And then advocates for ecumenism. You know, I, I agree with Pope Francis on this as well, because it's about time that the Protestant churches and the Eastern Orthodox churches as well stop being in rebellion against the Pope and come back to the church. Clearly, the World Council of Churches is no longer concerned about spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah, well, I mean, Jesus did say he wants us to be one, just as he and the Father are one. Instead, it attempts to bring all world religions together. You have given absolutely no indication for that to be the case. Having the Muslim at the beginning who was calling for peace wasn't espousing ecumenism, and desiring for all those who follow Christ to unite in order to spread the gospel? Why is that a bad thing? If your church is a member of or affiliated with the WCC, discuss it with your pastor. If he refuses to leave, you should consider quitting the church. Yep. Leaving the authority of a church in order to start your own thing is what Protestantism is all about. So if you like this video, like, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below. If you didn't like the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs down. Just let me know why in the comments. I'm sure you're wrong. And once again, I want to thank my patrons, especially in this time where I have been going through a lot of stuff and feeling pretty down and haven't been putting out the content like I really should be. I want to thank you for your patience and I, I will do better. If you want to join this team, Click the link down below. You can sign up for as little as $3 a month. Everything helps, and we appreciate all of it. Until next time, and remember, go to Mass.